Before we get to our main video, um, we're going to be looking at the pound yen. So this is our chat room and you can see, um, I'm going to show you, I called this trade earlier this morning and this is what I posted at 6 a.m. this morning and you're going to be able to see this, that we posted this trade setup and um, we talked about it in the chat room. So now we're going to get ready to talk about it on the video as it's already taken place. But you can see our chat room, this is where we have our chat room and discuss trades and everything else and talk about things throughout the day so it's a pretty good chat room pretty good members in here so this is the trade that we call this is the year this is the pound yen and we're getting ready to look at the pound yen trade as is now so let's jump right to the video all right traders i'm back again with another video and we want to start this thing off by looking at the news because the main thing is when you get into a trade you should always always know if there's going to be major news happening that day or anytime soon while you're getting ready to trade because that will affect your trade greatly all right you get wonder why you get stopped out with a, such a big move um it's because you didn't know there was news for that pair but the main thing we want to look at is okay so this is last week you see last week there was some major news here for the pound okay and it was the eu membership vote and then we had some more news on Friday, the BOE uh, Governor Carney speaks. So there was major news last week for the pound. And if you didn't know there was news in the pound, you could have gotten torn up. As a matter of fact, um, I know some people that did get torn up because they didn't even know there was news for the pound last week. And they were in pound trades and they got really tore up. So I feel bad for them. But um I always tell people to check the news before you ever even start a trade and make sure you know what's happening. All right, so this is last week's news. So let's see what's going on today currently. So we move up to this week's news here. So you can see this week, um, today's Wednesday. So looking at Wednesday, there is no news for the pound because we're looking at a pound yen trade right now. And matter of fact, we're in that trade. So we made sure there was no news. There hasn't been any news for that pair. But there is news coming up at 4.30 a.m., so we want to be careful there. We see where we are about midnight and maybe close out or whatever we plan to do. But make sure you have a plan and make sure you know there's news. All right, so with that said, let's go right to the charts. Okay, so we're looking here at the pound yen. We're not using Ichimoku because of a lot of reasons. Because mainly, you see this big move here, which was news. So that took everything out of... um that really broke the structure of the market took everything out of whack and now the market's going to try to get back into its regular structure that it was so it's going to take a while so while that happens there was a possibility well an opportunity to get into some trades so let's go with this pound yen this is four hour time frame i'm going to go to the monthly first okay so here's the monthly time frame you could see what's happening. This monthly is very bearish right now with this big whatever with all that happened here and it was starting to be bearish anyway, the violating these fractals here. So the monthly was very bearish and you could see where the pretty much the all time low here is on this pair. It's right down here. So I like to mark that because when price ever gets there, I'm kinda interested in, in the market at that point. So I'm gonna make this um a thick dash line so that we know what it is. We always make it red and set that as the default there oh no we don't want that one default <laughs> but there we go so we have that okay so when the market ever gets back here i'm very interested all right so let's go back down to the daily we're going to look at the daily time frame here and you could see the daily here so what i was looking at basically was why did the market come down to this point so I always like to, when we have major news in the market, makes a high or a low, I like to mark those levels and use those because I want to see why 
or if those points are going to be support and resistance levels ever. Because a lot of times, why you have to think, why did the market stop at that point? Is there a reason? And the people that control the markets really set these levels pretty much. So I'm wondering why that was an important level here. And then I'll mark this level just to see what happens when price gets there. Because I'm going to show you why these levels are so important. All right. And I'm going to show you why I looked at it the same way as I did a previous pair. All right, so let's go to look at a couple of these um, yen pairs. So first of all, we're going to look at, not the yen pairs, the Swiss franc pairs, sorry. So we're looking at the euro Swiss franc here, right? So we'll put that on a daily time frame. We're going to take Ichimoku off the chart and have a look at it. So we have Ichimoku off the chart. So the reason I'm looking at this trade is because, first of all, you can see what happened here with this Swiss franc pair, right? This was the Euro Swiss franc, so price came way down to this point here. And it left this point up here, so you want to be um, prepared for this market if it ever gets up to this point again. So we'll make this red and we'll make these the default. Oh, sorry, messed that up. I hit cancel. <laughs> Um, we want that right here. Okay, so now we have these levels marked. So what I looked at was basically why did price stop there? Why did it take off from here? All right, so those are some important things to look, look at. Now you can see how the market did. It recovered. It tried to recover from this big move here. All right, and pretty much came close to recovering. Now I'm going to take you to another Swiss franc pair. All right. So that's the Euro Swiss franc. Um, let's go to the pound Swiss franc. All right. We're going to remove Ichimoku so we could just look at this and show you what we're looking at here. And go to the daily time frame because we look at that daily. And we're going to mark these levels on the chart. So we want to go back to where we saw this happen with the market. So this was a pair that I called a trade on because, first of all, you could see, again, this looks just like the previous pair, and it looks much like the pound, kind of, what's happening with the pound. The market's trying to recover what it's lost already. And so the market's trying to get back into pretty much equilibrium, get back into normal structure. And then we have this level up here. Okay, so when price... I was really looking at this and when price gets back to this level, I wanted to make a trading opportunity. I wanted to use this resistance point to, to short this. So we put out a video when the market got there and we shorted it and you could see what happened here. The market moved up to that point right here and we shorted that market and you could see what the market did. It dropped. So we're taking in consideration this high here on the pound also but we're also looking at this low how price took off from that low and you can see it they look pretty much the same all right so we're using that as a strong support level and then you can see prices near this level again starting to get down to this point and bouncing off this level so the market stayed in between this this area here and this is a big support and resistance level so that's not really what we're looking at though we're looking at the pound yen here so here we are with the pound yen so we're looking at the pound yen trying to recover from this move here so we do have these levels marked in here now this support this resistance level sorry this resistance level up here it is not as strong as the resistance level that we saw on the pound swiss franc now this support level there was nothing really also showing us that that was a super strong level all right so we're just using the levels at, from the day of the news. But I'm, I'm really going to show you how I got into this trade right now. So I looked at this on the daily time frame. You could see where the market dropped. And then we had a big rejection off of this level. So the market tried to recover. And then we got back down. But we showed some indecision here. Well, just as a little bit of, um, call it a spinning top. But kind of indecision, not major indecision. Really, the market's not doing much here. So you could say it was a consolidated day, all right, but it wasn't really a, a real strong indecision day like we like we like to see um, as far as indecision, which would be something like this. Um,
somewhere else where we see some good indecision. Something like these here, that's indecision that we want to see. This is a little big, so it really wasn't indecision, but the market didn't move that far off of its point. So we went down to the four hour time frame, and this is where we really look at this. So go down to the four hour. So once we hit that four hour time frame, and I don't know why my computer is so slow, it's my internet is super slow, but you're going to see here, and I think we're, we're hitting this pullback now we might be able to hit these levels so let's see this is where we jumped into the trade because we use fractals a lot and fractals helped us to get into this trade I'm going to show you so the market was pretty much going sideways in a little range not a major range but we wanted to get above this level here so we saw this fractal develop the market pulled back once the market broke this um, bull fractal here then we took the trade to the upside and then now you can see the markets pulling back so we're gonna look for the market to quite possibly pull all the way back to this level here maybe around um, 137 what's that 137 let's see say about 137.4949 and that's probably where we're going to be looking to see if the market bounces off of that level for a trade back to the upside because see now the market is making bull fractals and we're not violating these bear fractals so we can use these bear fractals if you can afford to have a big stop loss as this you use these bear fractals as your support um, as your stop loss level all right and then you just follow the structure of the market pretty much and that's what we teach pretty much when we're trading and when we're in our courses and everything so that's what the trade that we're looking at and I'm gonna probably try to come and update this and show you an opportunity to get into this long if we pull back closer to that level if not then the market's gonna continue to move we're gonna violate this fractal and then we're gonna keep violating fractals to the upside because we pay close attention to these fractals because as the markets coming down we never break these bear fractals much we break these bull fractals you can see this whole market we never broke a bear a bull fractal alright we never broke a bull fractal here until the market changed structure right here alright once it changed the structure it moved and broke a bull fractal and then stop breaking bear fractals then we have the major news we broke a bear fractal and moved down to this point we formed bear fractals down here and now we broke our first um, bull fractal that first bull fractal break is important that sets the market structure and the market um, trend to the upside and we'll just follow that out all right so we teach a lot of this stuff in the course along with the Ichimoku system and price action and you know learning your candlestick analysis so if you're interested in that, you know, you can come visit my site at fx at one and you could also become a member. Our membership now, we have some very nice membership offers. So if you're interested in that, then that's a possibility. We also post a lot of videos there. We have um, trade setups. We don't call them trade alerts. We call them trade setups because they're much like this, what I just showed you here. And it'll show you how to get into a trade and talk about how, but you already learned these things. And then when I post a setup, you'll know what I'm talking about and be able to take that setup based off of what you see, not what I tell you. If I just tell you a level to get into a trade, I mean, you don't want to just take my word to get, for getting into a trade. I tell you, hey, get into this trade at 137.96 and you do that, okay? And you have no rhyme or reason why you're doing it just because I told you to get into that trade. That's not the way you want to do. You want to be able to learn how to trade, learn how to spot a setup and know when to get into a trade. So the most thing that we ask, what we do is, if you can ask, answer these questions, when, where, how, and why, to get into a trade, if you can answer those four things, then that's a good opportunity for you to take that trade because you understand what's happening. So we want to be able to answer those questions before we get into any trade, all right? So now that four hour candle has closed. All right, and then you could see we're looking at a possible bounce off of this level. So I may be updating this video pretty quickly, but the bounce off of this level, I want to see if this is done yet because basically, if we see the market pull back even closer to this level, the top of this range area, it's not really a major range, but the top of that level where we broke this fractal because this fractal now becomes. A support level 
and then we need to violate this point okay so that's what we're looking at on our trade um, we try to update it as time goes and maybe we'll be have some more opportunities for people to get into this trade but like I was saying um, you could join our membership and you get this every time we post a trade setup you get um, our chat room which we posted this in the chat room so members were able to jump in here in the chat room we have our forum we have our um, the website with all of our videos which have the weekly market report where I do this for every pair and then I post that for the week and we have um, webinars we have our weekly webinars and then we post those also on the site we have our trade setups page where we have all the trade setups so we have a lot of things going on and I have a lot of happy members and a lot of members who really um, know what they're talking about so if you do decide to become a member and join our, our site then you're gonna have a lot of knowledgeable, pe knowledgeable people to help you and talk to you all right because trading is a, a lonely business you're doing it all by yourself most of the time you're sitting around eight hours I don't sit at a computer eight hours I trade the four-hour time frame in the daily I don't sit around eight hours looking for trades if a trade is there it's there I don't look for a trade I let a trade set up develop and when I see that trade set up then I take it there's no need for me to look for a trade I don't need to look for a trade that trade needs to come to me and develop so in other words what I'm saying when I see I see before the market moves to a level a level that I'm looking for the market to move back to based off of support and resistance and the fractals and everything like that if the market comes back to that point then it gives me an opportunity to get in to get into the trade so I'm already knowing where I want to get into the trade and know how I want to get into the trade if the market gives me that signal that I'm going to be looking for and then after that what is what do we get into the trade how what where why we need to answer those questions like I said so all right, so that's all on this trade setup. Um, we're going to see if the market doesn't pull back any farther to that point. We're pretty much on that level. Uh, we may just be watching the market move to the upside. A lot of times we like to trade these fractal breakouts here, which would be a break above this level. Basically, that's how I got into this trade here. I traded the break of this fractal. So the market pulls back and then it should break this fractal if it's going to continue higher. If the market's not going to go any farther, it won't break that fractal because that'll be another resistance level and then you'll see the market drop to the downside all right I really wanted to see this trade move down to this point and get it I was greedy I wanted it to be here so when it was here I wanted it to come down all the way to this point and then I could get into the trade because I knew this would be a good support and resistance level so now up here this gave the market room to come back to me again but it looks like we're moving so I'm gonna follow the structure the four hour structure of these fract fractals and then uh, that'll determine my trade and a lot of times I like to stay two candles behind as my stop loss so if you become a member basically you learn how to follow your stop losses and and set up the whole trade and everything you you understand all this we don't just trade with Ichimoku we need to understand the market and know the market so that's it guys um, I'm gonna end this and maybe we'll be coming back with an update but until then hope you guys enjoyed that and Come over and visit my site, fx at one glance .com. And until next time, guys, have a great one and God bless. So long.